Okay, <clears throat> so what you'll see here when you first log into Focus is our dashboard. Now this dashboard you can see here is taking data from multiple modules within your ERP package. So what I can see is here to start with, we're just looking at our sales current versus previous. So what we're looking at in this case, in this example, is a manufacturer distribution type business that we're looking at here. So we're looking at sales invoices and that kind of stuff to start with. So I can see here I've got sales current versus previous. I can see I've got a metric around lost customers, declining customers, how many new customers we've got. But then also taking things from your accounts receivable and how much money you've got due in this month from your customers, information from your inventory management system here with 129 products that you've got a low stock value of, and then also in your accounts payable section here, how much, in, how much money you've got, you've got due out in this specific period. If we scroll down a little bit, we can start to see some GL information here. So this is just two different companies that we've got listed within Focus and how the different sales values here and income information is coming in from, from our GL area. We've also got a sales selection criteria down the bottom here. Now these dashboards are fully dynamic. So this means if I'm interested in Alan today as a sales rep, if I click on Alan and we just scroll up to the top a little bit here now, what you can see is you can see we've got our lost customers, our declining customers and our new customers and our accounts receivable. That data is updating in the background now. So that's going to show us that information based on that specific selection that we've made against the data there. So I can see here I've got three declining customers in this case. We've got one new customer and it's going to show us how much receivables we've got this month. So this sales rep's got almost $30,000 due in from his customers in this month. Let's say we're interested in our lost customers now. We want to see who they are, what they used to purchase, that type of thing. Very quickly, just by clicking on that analyze button in the top corner, what we can see is now is our actual focus database. What we're seeing is here, we've got a list of 11 customers as we saw on the front page, which we've defined as a lost customer. In this case, we've defined a lost customer as someone who hasn't purchased over the last four months, in this case. Now I can see here one that sticks out straight away. Barnsley Metropolitan Council. I can see they're worth $4,000 over the last 12 months, which is the date range that we're looking at. All the other ones are quite small, so we might, not be, we might not need to worry about those. This is the area that we want to concentrate on today. The whole idea of focus now is for you to go and slice and dice this data and drill down into the data to try and find out things about that customer so you can then go and look at that customer, talk to them and find out what's actually gone wrong with their, with their business or why they're not doing so much business with you in this specific, this specific period. So highlight that customer. We might want to take a look at the product categories that they were buying from us now. So we can see down the left hand side, these are what we call our dimensions or our pillars within the data. And this is how you guys run your business, fully customizable to, to you. Typically with most ERP packages, we have a simple um, base database that we build and that can be modified from that point moving forward. But I can see here, if we look at our product categories, I can click on that and I can see what products they were purchasing. So they were into our downlights and our K and B areas in this case. So we might want to highlight downlights and find out exactly which downlights products that customer was purchasing from us. So I can quickly highlight that and then click on our products. And now we've gone that one step deeper into the data. These are all the downlight products that that customer was purchasing us, purchasing from us over the last 12 months that they've stopped buying from us in this specific case. So very, very simple. We can see that. Let me just reset that now using my red reset button at the top and we'll take a look at a couple of different things within the database now. One important thing that a lot of customers want to have a look at is the idea of link sell opportunities. If we're selling product A to a customer, why aren't we selling product B and C in this case? Let's have a look at how we can compare those within focus. Again, I'll jump to my product category. I'll use my transformers, my low voltage and my median voltage lighting group here. Highlight those, use my matrix functionality at the top and now I can see that it's taken those three groupings, place them across the top of the page and then if I click on my customer list now, what we're going to be able to see is a list of all our customers and which groups they're performing well in and which groups they're not performing in well in at all. 
I can see the top four here in this case aren't buying anything from my medium voltage lighting group, but they are buying something from one of the two of the other groups there in this case. So very simply, you can start to see that gap analysis within the organisation that you've got there. Let me just reset that once more and we'll look at one more example in the sales database then we'll take a look at some of the things in the other databases that we've got there. What I've got here is just a list of all my customers. I can see here that I've got 24 million, almost 25 million dollars worth of sales over the last 12 months. Maybe I want to take a look at how my customers are performing this year versus last year for instance. So I can very simply change that into a variance view of the data and now what I can see is I can see the current, I can see the previous and I can see a variance value. So I can see in total we're about 22% increase this year versus last year. But what we really want to concentrate on in this case is the negative story, which customers have dropped off. So you'll notice here I've clicked on my variance column here, it's showing me the positive story. This customer's here is up 218,000. I can click on it again and it's going to show me the negative story now. This customer's down 50,000, this one's down 50,000 as well. Let's click on herbs and spices. Now we can drill down further into that. What product group in particular has herbs and spices got an issue with? We'll come down here to product category again and then we can see it's down lights, low voltage, outside lights in this case. They've picked up a little bit down the bottom here but there's still some issues in these groups. Again, we could highlight any of these maybe down lights in this case, click back on our product list and here's the breakdown of those products that we're seeing, where they've increased, where they've decreased. However, we're looking at this by a dollar value, which might not be the right way to look at it in this case. Within Focus, because we can take data from anywhere, we can grab additional information. So I can see we're looking at sales value here, you might want to look at how much those in, that costs, the total quantity, that we will look at that we've sold over that period, profit, margin and various other different measures here that we can import and calculate for you. So in this case we'll just look at it by quantity, change that to quantity, click off there and now we can see this based on a quantity view rather than a total value view in this example. So you can see how very easy it is to slice and dice the data and keep drilling down and looking at it from different angles there in this case. So. That's a sales database view or sales module view in this case. Let's close that down. Let's say we're finished with that now. Let's shut that down and we'll come back to our dashboard. Now obviously we've got various other different bits and pieces here that we want to look at and that we can address. We can look at our inventory database now and we can say, well, what, show me my low stock quantity products. So if I click on that, this is going to take us into our inventory database now. What I've defined in this case, we're looking at a low stock products. These are all our products that are below our minimum stock quantity values for the database here. So I can see I've got my total quantity on hand and I've got 129 products that we've got a low stock value of in this case. So a very simple view of the data. We can obviously again slice and dice this however we see fit. You guys might have various different warehouses that you've got here. So I can see we've got North Atlantic, Mid Atlantic, etc., Northwest that I can look at and just highlighting that and then clicking on my products or my product categories I think can again slice and dice the data to see exactly which products we've got the issue in in that specific warehouse. Alternatively we could change it to various other different measures here. Now because we're in an inventory based environment now you can see we've got various different measures here. We've got stock quantity availables, quantity allocated, different things, weak stock on hand etc, minimum stock quantities, maximum stock quantities. So very simply we can change that data to look at different views of it in this case. However, we can also do calculations around the data and we can use scanned reports essentially. So if you build a report specifically that you're after, I've built one here earlier called my stock snapshot. If I run my stock snapshot report, what this report actually shows me is my, sto my total quantity on hand in the first column, then it takes my average quantity sold per month and then compares those two together and gives us a value of how many months in stock we've got based on that total average quantity sold by, divided by 
our quantity on hand in this case. So in the top line here, we've got 30,000 on hand, we're selling about 5,000 a month. So we've got almost six months worth of stock of that product left in, in the warehouse. I can also have a look at the one underneath here though. We've only got 0.3 months worth of stock of that product. Next one down, 0.5. So very simply, we can start to look and find out where we've got problems with our data with low stock, or the alternative down here, in this case, we've got an obsolete product, which we're only selling 23 units per month. So we've got a thousand, over a thousand months worth of stock or 10 years worth of stock in this specific product. So we need to try and get rid of it, work out what's happening there to remove that stock from our warehouse in this case. So we're happy with our inventory. We'll close that down now and we'll have a look at something else within, within the data now. Let me just remove the selection against our sales rep there now. So we'll jump back to our standard view of our dashboard in this case. And we'll take a look at our accounts receivable, how much we've got due this month in this case. So just by highlighting that again, clicking on it, we can then drill down into our accounts receivable database. So what I can see is here, this is all my customers, how, what their outstanding value is based on a due date. If we look at the top here, invoices by due date, this is everything that's due in October in this case. Okay. So we can see everything that's due in October in this case. We obviously have down the left hand side here, we've got various different groupings of that information. So if we can come down and we can have a look at which rep belongs to and who owns those customers in order for them to chase the, chase the debt. We can also have a look at the age of that debt in this case, so we can see we've got 30 days or 30 to 60 days in this case. We can even change our date ranges very simply as well. So at the moment I'm just looking at current month, but what about if I want to change this data to look at a larger date range, maybe the last three months. Show me all my outstanding invoices for the last three months in this case. I can change that and now we can very easily see 30 to 60, 60 to 90, and 90 to 120 in this case. We might want to say, well, we want to have a look at all these transactions that we've got here that are, that are in the 60 to 90 and the 90 to 120 day bucket. Who, who's, whose customers are they? And how can we try and find out which customers they are so we can go and talk to them and try and get that payment made? Click on my sales rep again, just like we did before. I can see I'm just looking at transactions based on those individual um, aging buckets that we're looking at there. And I might see here Paul McGee in this case, he's got 18,000 odd over the last three months. Let's drill into that and see which customers specifically are affected there. So I can click on my customers and now we can see those three customers that are outstanding which, and which groupings they belong to and so we can now go off and address those specific specific customers to try and find out exactly why they haven't paid, etc. in this case. So very, very simple, we can see that. Let's shut that down again and we'll have a look at the final database today. Actually, second last database, sorry. We'll have a look at our GL information here. So what I'm actually looking at, I'm going to drill into this data behind the scenes now. And what we're looking at here is just our a breakdown of our sales. We're using a GL database here, so the numbers are obviously, depending on the types of accounts that you're using, um, will be positives or negatives. So I can see here we're looking at our regions, and we're looking at our regions in this case based on our company one and our company two data in this case. So a very simple view of the data about how those are performing there. I might just reset this to start with and, and show you a bit about how we can slice and dice in a GL environment. I'll click on reset to start with. And we might come down to the bottom here and have a look at our company. Now, what we're looking at here, we've got company one and company two. Now, traditionally in some ERP packages, if you've got multiple companies, it can be quite hard to consolidate that information together um, without a bit of trickery. Within Focus, we can typically take data from multiple different sources, multiple companies, and import them together so you can get a quick and easy consolidated view at the click of a button, really. I can see company one and company two here. I might say today though, I just want to concentrate on company one. So I'm going to look at company one in this example. I'm going to take a look at my source here, so where my transactions are coming from. So I can see here I've got my AP invoices, my AR invoices, general ledger journal entries, shipments, etc. 
In this case, I might want to have a look at my accounts payable invoices. I don't want to see how they're performing based on a specific division in this case. So if I click on my division, I can see, oops, maybe not my division, region. Sorry, my account in this case. I can see here, if I click on my account, I can see how those are performing in this case. I can see that we've got an accounts payable clearing account there, and we can look at that. We could also change the date range to be a different date range to see how that's performing over a larger time frame. I might look at this based on my rolling 12 months in this example. So I can see now over a much larger date range how those different accounts that are affected by that specific source of buy my, buy my accounts payable based on my company one, how the values are changing. So inventory, work in progress, equipment, different areas we can see and how those are performing in this area. Again, if I look at my division now underneath, we can see how that's broken up by division as well in this case. So I can see my commercial and retail divisions. I might say I'm just interested in my retail divisions in this case. Click on that and then we can come back to our accounts at the top there and see the accounts that specifically relate to that retail division in this case. And this is going to show me my utilities in this example. So very, very simply, you can see this is giving you a nice overview about how Focus fits together. We can take data from multiple sources, combine it all together into a nice, easy to use graphical interface, show specific KPIs for you then to drill down on in into. Also, as I mentioned at the start, we don't really care where we get our data from within a Focus database. In this case, we've based all this information on a ACPAC database. But from a focus perspective, we've got, as I said, about 350 customers in Australia on probably 70 or 80 different ERP packages. So it really just relates to where that data is stored and if we can get access to it, we can build that information into focus for a database there now. So that's the end of the demonstration. Any questions you guys have, just let us know and we can get them answered for you there.